Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Ty Dollar Sign. Make sure you check me out on the Bootleg Kev podcast. It is the Bootleg Kev show. We have a special guest. He brought his cancer sticks to the interview. We're smoking cigarettes. This is not marijuana. Don't do all that, man. We got Ty Dollar Sign here. How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, man. It's been a. a I mean, I see. I've seen you around, but I feel like uh, I just saw you at the Joiner show backstage. That's what's, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I must have been smoking something else. You must have been smoking something else. But it's good to see you, man. Yeah, uh, for sure. Good to see you. Loving too. this new record. I you, appreciate you it. You mustard and Dirk. Shout out to my brothers. Um, it's been a minute since we dropped, and uh, we back. Back. Like we never left. It is interesting that like you guys are doing a joint album together, which feels like overdue. I, I can uh I can see that. It feels like, you know, there should have been like this like I don't know, seven years ago or something. But maybe I'm Yeah, crazy. but we're doing it now, you know, all that woulda coulda shoulda shit. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know. The record is here. Why the record not? is here. It's one of the greatest records that you're gonna hear. And uh I can't wait for you to hear it, man. I was going to say timing-wise, like, why was it like, you know what, now's the time. Like, let's do it. Let's get together. Let's do a whole fucking album. You know, God's timing, you know. That's why? Yeah, that's why. We on God's timing. You on God's timing. I'm an atheist, so I don't know. Uh, but you on God's timing, whether you want to believe it or not. Yeah. Hello. Maybe. Hello. Ding, ding, ding. How many records? Uh, enough. Hmm. Just the perfect amount. Not one of those albums that have... All these records for streams, trying to cheat. You know what I'm saying? You either gonna love it or you not. So it's that one of them true. ones. That's kind of like a thing happening where it'd be like you'll you'll see like God, there's 27 yeah, songs. Man, y'all cheating, album. y'all cheating. Make an actual good album. Yeah. Let's How go. about no filler? All bangers. Let's like, go. Body of work. Let's go. Yeah. Oh man, that's what I'm talking you're about. You're one of the. I, I do feel like when it comes to bodies of work, though, you're one of the most consistent artists. At least in my opinion, when I know if you drop a, a project, we even go to the mixtape days. Like I just know that there's, I could just press play. That means a lot, my brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, Real. even the last album, uh, there was like, there was like some stuff that I feel like uh, when the album came out, it was amazing. But there were so many records that didn't make that last project. Yeah. That you had played me at your yeah, house. Yeah, that's a whole nother. Yeah, we ended up making a whole nother album last minute, just because I was having fun in the studio, and that's the one I decided to go with. And the division album was dope. Thank you, I appreciate that as well. Shout, Shout out, out to, to them. my brother Daniel. Shout out to uh, eighty five. I just seen him out in Miami. They got a new album that's about to drop. I think yeah, it comes out next week. I think. Oh, that's gonna be crazy. I I'm loving wait. the art. I love. I, I'm loving. The niggas don't never want to send the album early. I don't know what's up with that, but send that thing. I love how they got in with JD and like I'm like I'm hearing these songs and I'm like this shit reminds me of like 99 R&B which is a good thing by the way. Yeah. I mean, that's what I feel like R&B's been miss- missing. Everybody got lazy with it. So, when you get artists like Division, you know, going crazy, Brent Fias going crazy. Yes. Uh myself of course. LMA's though. LMA. Uh, it's a couple we can name for sure that's doing it, but you know, that's a good thing for sure. 100%. Shout man. out to JD. 100%. Shout out JD. Uh, for you though, what has been like, was there any sort of like creative difference for you honing in with one producer for a whole project or was it kind of, did it make it easier? Was it more difficult? Was it, did it change your process at all? When I'm working with Mustard, it's like my, you know, he's my brother, you know what I'm saying? We started in this shit together. So it's like working with if it was me and you working on some yeah, shit together. Yeah, you guys are like on magazine covers and shit together. You guys yeah. are very synonymous with each other. Mm-hmm. So it was it was, it was easy. It was easy, man. Just his ideas, my ideas, back and forth, back and forth. It was quick, you know, the actual time we spent in the studio. How how long did it, like, if you had to guess, estimate, like, what, how long did it take for you to knock it out? It didn't take more than a month to knock it out, but just spanned over time due to his schedule and my schedule. Wow. Do you get first like dibs over the beats? For sure. He gave me all this fire shit. And then I was giving him, you know, ideas, melodies with vocals. And then he'll add his parts to it. And we just going back and forth like that. So it was crazy. Yeah. I always, whenever I'm talking about you in interviews, I always say that creatively you're a genius. I 
appreciate it, man. You're historically one of the more slept on artists somehow of our time. I don't like that slept on shit. I'm one of the greatest artists of our time. Well, so y'all got to stop saying that shit. You're a genius. Stop pushing that narrative. Todd Dallas Sign, one of the best y'all ever heard. I agree fully. Um, are we? Are we? Oh, we're going chain. We're chaining them up. Hey, let me just hold one. Can I hold one? Can you light one and just let me hold it? Let me just soak up some of that fucking cans. You know what I mean? For people it. who don't know, you're not like a regular smoker, but these are special. These are special. I don't know why I'm going so fast on them right now. I got to uh, ration these things out. I'm going to just take one pull just to keep it lit. That's the first time I've ever smoked a cigarette. Actually, when I was eight, did you, I did. You got to bite that first one, the little tangy part. Nah, you're you going to hear it. Look at it. You see the little orange part? That's I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with any more of this. All uh, right, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, when did Dwight get here? What the fuck? I got both. We got both Atlantic reps in this motherfucker. Oh, right man, now. it's special, man. We out here. Come on. You bringing them We're out, We're going man. number one. You bringing them out. Um, yeah, shout out to Dirk, man. Uh, I love the, the new record, obviously. Uh, I feel like you're the kind of artist that when you get in with somebody, that there might be like five or six unreleased songs with them sitting on a hard drive somewhere. Yeah, is that I mean, is that a fair assumption uh, in general with Ty? Yeah, yeah, you know, off and on. Uh, Dirk is special with me and bro. Like we was on the uh, cover of the Double XL Freshman together, and, wow. and been doing it since then. And right. now he's one of the biggest artists out there. You know, so shout out to Dirk and all the hard work he's put in. And it's you know, I'm happy for bro for sure to see all that shit pay off. How many songs unreleased do you have with him? I mean, I couldn't even say, it, but we got songs for sure. Mm. It's crazy because I kind of, uh, I, the, even just, just back to the Chicago thing, uh, obviously Dirk's an OG. Like we've seen him grow into this superstar over the last 10 years. First time I ever saw a guy like Lil Bibby, Bibby was on tour with you. Yeah. <laughs> was, was that fucking, what was that, like 2014? And now he's obviously a huge executive and he's yeah. like richer than everybody, you know? Yeah, wow. <laughs> he did his thing, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a uh, it's good to see shit like that. But you were always pretty much like, work pays with, off. with the I was gonna say you were pretty much tapped in with Chicago, like from the rip. Like, yeah, yeah. Shout out to all my brothers out there. You know, rest in rest in peace, Fredo. Rest in peace to Fredo, indeed. Uh, speaking of Chicago, your friend Kanye, man, you guys have classics together. Yes. Uh, I he's my favorite artist of all time. He's up there. All his albums are up there. You see the little bears. Yes, sir. He's have you spoken also, with him? Also one of the greatest artists of our time. Have you spoken with him? Next to Ty Dolla Sign. Any of this craziness has been going on? I have not got a chance to speak to him now. Um, I feel like you guys are genuine friends. Is that safe to assume? Yeah, for sure. I'm bro. Um, you know, I feel like Kanye at times says things that probably... I feel like the bigger point gets lost in some of the delivery that he'd be saying... Um, would you what would, would, would like? Would you say, based on some of the narratives that are being painted about Ye with some of the, some of the anti-Semitic shit, I feel like you know him better than most of the people that are speaking about him. He's I a would good say, guy. I would say he's a great guy. I would say he does what he wants. There's got to be some that he's you know trying to get across with whatever he's doing. And at the end of the day, he's a great guy. So we love Kanye. And you guys have classics together. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. When you work with, because uh, uh, you work with a guy like Muster, who, again, a modern-day legend. Yeah. One of the best producers of our generation. You've worked with EA. What's the creative difference between those two guys in the studio? The uh, individuals. Uh, Ye has the way he does shit. Muster has the way he does shit. It's completely different, but How we is all it make great. Though? I mean, you can hear it. I just mean yeah. like in terms of like the process, because I always hear Ye's like more sporadic. Like sometimes he just might set up a fucking microphone in the corner over there and like... But Mustard may do the same thing. So it's just different styles. You know, we came up different ways and have different techniques of doing this shit. But at the end of the day, we all make bangers. So, yeah. but way true. different ways of doing this shit. There's just a different route to getting to the banger with each person. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Has there been a producer, because, you know, a lot of people don't know this about you. You're kind of like a what I would consider to be a, quite the hip-hop head. Yeah, for sure. You love you some Jay Dilla. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
there's been guys like Madlib who've been pretty active recently, like putting out great records. But like, has you got been, Madlib's number? I don't. I don't think anybody does. That's except, that's except one guy Gibbs. I've been wanting to work with from the beginning that I, I haven't got a chance to. I never really came across, bro. So I don't if, think anyone's come across. Holla at me, bro, if you hear this shit. I was gonna say that's somebody who you'd like to work with. I would love to work with Madlib. I recently just did an interview with Talib Kweli, and we supposed to do something. He's also a legend to me, and course, someone yeah, I always wanted to work with. So. I love that type of music for sure. I don't think people would put that like together because I mean you've done some records. Any, with some anybody of those guys. that's a real Ty fan would know, like mm -hmm. back from Ty and Corey days all the way up to now, and even like if that that one off I dropped with J Cole, like if you hear that you would know that's like that's my type of shit. Yeah, yeah. Madlib, we got to make it happen. He's I out there. You. He's yeah. just he's making. I already made um all uh the uh fucking uh. Bandana shit, the Freddie Gibbs album. I heard he made that shit off his iPad. Yeah, man. That's a, <laughs> he a boy. Here, you can so, put this out too. I'm just kind of wasting it. Or you could just take it. I don't want it. You just gonna waste my shit like that, man? These it does some shit. It just, you know what? I understand the appeal of it though. I feel like I'm in a movie. I feel like we should be, there should be like green lights and pool tables around. Yeah, I feel you survive, like strange right? Strange women, you know what I mean? Maybe some whiskey. Yeah, but I'm not trying to push it, push it on nobody. Don't fuck with it. It's just trash. I just happen to like it. Yeah, I respect it. Hey, whatever. So, sure. uh, you still a heavy smoker on the on the on the ganja? Yeah. Papers only still. Papers only still. It's still Taylor Gang to the day I die. Yes. You and Wiz uh, gonna run it back on the joint the joint side project. What's up, Wiz? Let's do it. Yeah. He got his new album about to drop. I'm on there for sure. What's it called? G uh, G. Was it what the fuck is it called? He's not even on Atlantic anymore. You guys wouldn't even fucking know. Asylum, it's supposed to be the, same. the ex the exclusive the, the uh, uh, um, deluxe edition. I think just dropped of multiverse, but he's got his other shit. G Raw, G Star, G something. G, uh, you know what? Uh, fuck, you got me. Erase this part. God damn it. <laughs> I think we could just pull it out and give him a nice yeah. plug because because that's our brother and we love yeah, him. For sure. It's called G something. Uh, Wiz, we gotta plug Wiz's album, man. We can't not do it. Yeah, knowing him, it's probably nowhere on. Yeah, there's. Nah, it's gotta be on his on his page. I've been seeing him promote it. Yeah, he's been promoting it, but it's not in the captions. Oh, G Rage, G Rage, G Rage. G -Rage. All right, I race up until here. So the new Wiz album, G Rage, man, that shit finna go crazy. Crazy. Uh, um, who's on the album, man? Besides Dirk. On my album, uh, Mustard and Ty Dolla Sign, and I'm featuring Ty Dolla Sign on a lot of songs. I mean, of I course, you know when you see that feature in Ty Dolla Sign, but when you see his own project, like he said, you know that shit gonna ride. Not like these other albums. But who's on the album outside of uh, you and Dirk? Me, Dirk, uh, Mustard. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We've gathered that much. Ten Summers, Easy Money, you know. LMA. I mean, if LMA would bless us with a, a verse or ad lib, uh -huh. you know, I'm not saying nothing yet, man. But you know, I'm a player for you. Pull up to the studio after this. Uh, we've got a studio right in there. You just plug. I got in you. I got you. I got you. You can play me some shit. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, the song's out. We know Dirk's on the fucking album, man. Yeah, get that, my friends, man. Run that back. Shout out to everybody playing that shit. You heard it first right here on Boulay Cab. What did we hear first? You gave me no exclusives. I gave you my friends. Y'all heard it first. Oh. Right here on Bullet Kev, which I'm talking you. about. This guy says, Dwight gets around, he starts introducing fucking songs in the middle of the interview. Um, I'm just talking about the most important song out right now, man. My friends. It's a great record. Ty Dolla Sign and Mustard featuring Lil Dirk. You know what I'm saying? We going up. I heard we just charted on, on something today. You know what I'm saying? That's our first little I think it's charting time back. rhythm, right? Let's fucking go! What y'all talking about? Hey, what up, y'all? Bootleg Kev. Got to stop the interview to tell you about our newest sponsor, man. Shout out to the homies at Hardeen Las Vegas. That's right. The number one dispensary in the whole state of Nevada, let alone in the whole fucking country. So many choices of premium cannabis, ladies and gentlemen. It is like, how can I put this? You walk into it. You go to Hardeen in Las Vegas. When you're on vacation, when you're out there tricking off, whatever you're doing, stop off at Hardeen. Tell them I sent you. Be like, yo, bootleg Kev sent me. 
they're going to take care of you at Hardeen. When I say selection, I mean selection of the best premium cannabis in the world, the best dispensary. There's a reason why Hardeen is world famous. Follow them right now, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Go to their website, HardeenLasVegas.com. That's J-A-R-D-I-N underscore Las Vegas. When you're in Vegas, you have to pull up to Hardeen. Tell them I sent you and get high off your fucking face. I don't even know what that means. How do you get high off of your face? Eh, whatever. Melt your fucking face off with some of that good Hardeen, y'all. Go follow him one more time. That's Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Let's get back to the interview. Oh, yeah. yeah I saw you with Malika Andrews uh, with the MPC Ooh. on ESPN. What's up? What happened there? Uh, that was amazing, man. We got a chance to uh, join the uh, ESPN studio today. Me and Mustard was making beats right there live. You know what I'm saying? They ain't really seen that, but you know the tour. The tour is coming that. soon. You know. You guys go on tour. You guys pull out the NPC. That'd be fucking O-M-G. epic. O M G. I remember I saw Jurassic Five do that for the first time when I was a kid. Uh, Cut Chemist and DJ Newmark pulled out the fucking NPC. That shit blew my mind. Man, you and Mustard did that together. Yeah, we did that today on ESPN. Yeah, it was legendary. Know. Yeah. Shout out to all my ESPN fam, and uh, we got the song as well uh we did a collab with the nba so basically every game you're gonna hear it you know what i'm saying like i said the most important song right now i did a remix the nba version the espn version you know i'm about to do the bootleg cat version we out here are you gonna do some uh some dub plates for the djs of course that's the most important you know next to the fans shout out to all my djs out there there it is man how have you been uh besides recording relentlessly uh you know, I know you got to spend a lot more time with the family during the pandemic. You know, you, you obviously touring and shows and shit. Yeah, my daughter, man, uh, she started her clothing line. And uh, the first drop is Green Eye Girls. And uh, she started her website. She's 17 now. She's playing basketball. She's wow. going crazy. And, you know, just seeing that, just seeing her blossom has just been one of the greatest gifts from God for sure. Is she so a junior? Been, no, nah, she's a senior. Oh, yeah. So my son's seven, just turned 17, but he's a junior. It's kind of crazy having like a little adult in your fucking house, right? Well, how's it having a young man? It's I know good. how it is he's, having a young lady. I'm, I mean, listen, I am scared to have a daughter. So if me and my wife have another kid, I'm kind of hoping I have a daughter because I feel like it might change me for the better. Yeah. Not to say that I need a lot of changing. I'm a great fucking catch, you know what I'm saying? But my son... <laughs> My son is like a little dude, man. Like he's like a little ma- like he's more mature than me. Yeah, which is a problem. Wow, wow. But he's definitely like the one. Like, yo, dad. Is he a sniper? Like with women? Is he a sniper? Or on Call of Duty. <laughs> did Did he pour champagne on her? He's got a. <laughs> he's got a girlfriend. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> now he's got a girlfriend. She's a sweetheart. That's what's up. But now he's like a you know he's like a music nerd now. Oh, for real? Yeah. Like, he used to be, like, you know, into, like, Fall Out Boy and, like, Lil Pump. But now he's, like, you know, diving into vinyl and, like, it's dope to see. You know? That's dope. So he's, like, leaning towards the DJ side, the production side. No, I just, he's he just, rap he's just a fan. Key? No, 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 no. Uh-huh. He shouldn't rap. <laughs> Don't do him like that. No, nah, him and his friends be trying to rap and shit in here, like, and it's fucking terrible. Come on, man. He might pop out in the next few months on some some young Mac Miller. Hey, maybe. That'd be fire. Maybe, man. I don't know. Uh, hey, yo, take me back, man, to like 2012, 2013 days, all-star days, fucking tooted and booted days. Like, at any point in time, did you foresee that you and YG and Mustard would be the face of a generation of L.A. music? Did y'all even uh, have like any sort of like... I always dreamed since a kid, even if you go before that, that one day I would make my way and, you know, and to be in that. Um, when I first met YG and I first met Mustard, I would have never imagined, you know what I'm saying, that we was going to do what we did, just to be honest. But we did it for sure. We We teamed up and... It's been it's been a journey for sure. Shout out to both of my brothers. Yeah, it's crazy because like I remember the first time I ever met you, uh, 
you guys were on tour with Bobby Brackens, and I think Cray Sean was my brother. Wasn't Cray Sean the video person on the tour? The Gucci Gucci chick? Wasn't she like yeah, Bobby Brackens like camera She chick? was the camera. She was the camera girl for sure. <laughs> Damn, I forgot about that. Yeah. She sure was, man. There's an interview of me with a GoPro that is fuzzy as fuck. And you I'm interviewing YG and Bobby Brackens, and I'm making fun of Bobby Brackens' pants. And then you walk in and they're like, you yeah. said I was making fun of Bobby Bracken's no, but exotic you, ass pants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you walk in and they're like, oh, this is actually the guy that's on uh, at the like at the time, like I, I didn't know who you were, right? So they were like, oh, this is the guy who's actually on Tudor and the Buddha or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's all on YouTube. It's crazy. I'm like, yeah, the first time I met Ty is on YouTube. That's hard. It's on YouTube. I need that. I mean, it's on the internet. Yeah. For the, sure. The GoPro, or that wasn't even a GoPro. What was the uh, flip cam? Remember the flip cams? They had a little USB that popped out. Yep. Them shits were epic. Wow. 100%. Do you feel like um, you've kind of uh, caught some TikTok love during the pandemic? Like a song like Something New is obviously a record that was a few years old, but had like a whole new life yeah. on TikTok. But you don't make music for TikTok. You make timeless records. And if it happens to work out that way, great, right? Yeah. Do you feel like now that the industry is changing and like, attention spans gotten short over the last five years for sure but do you feel like um ever any frustration with just kind of like you know where like the music industry's attention is like yo this has to go on t i'm sure you hear from the label i feel like that attention span shit got shorter shit is like another narrative and that's like some shit to make it for people that suck to be able to to make money on music yes yeah like, uh, I'd rather just make good ass music and, like you said, wherever it goes, it goes. If it happens, it happens, but you're yeah, not forcing it. Like, nothing. let's try to make good music though, instead of like just making something for TikTok, making something to live for like five seconds. Like, let's make some timeless shit. So, yeah, that's what I'm still on. And you've made timeless music your whole career. And, like, if we always look at who's at the top, they are not doing, they're not playing along with no, nothing. Kendrick Lamar, his album yeah. is fucking. Every time. It's like, come on. The new shit is crazy. Every time. Every and time for sure. Who's got your favorite albums of the year? Kendrick, Ty Dolla Sign and Mustard. Okay, you got to just qualify yourself. It's not out yet. I know, but I'm going to just be honest. Is it though. coming out this year? Ty Dolla Sign and Mustard, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, what else came out this year? Uh, the Freddie Gibbs album is great, Triple S. Uh, I love J.I.D.'s album. Jid, he goes crazy, man. I'm His so proud of him. Crazy. Denzel he, Curry had a great album this year. Tana Talk Four from Benny was great. Um, the Benny album was hard. Ben I listened ben to that Staples a gang of times. Album was great. Vince Staples album, I listened to that shit a gang of times. Shout out to Vince for sure. Vince Staples album is amazing. Um, Who are we missing? Be There's been some good shit this year though. Simba, he's doing Simba? his thing. Yeah, he's I, killing it. Simba was so offended that I didn't have him in my list. For real? Yeah, I mean it was it was a good project. What? Simba goes crazy. And you're on his first uh you know, you're on Yeah. The, young you boy. I love it. Young boy, everything he been dropping. I fuck with his music heavy. Every you've had enough time this year to listen to everything? I'll be listening to his shit. I fuck with his no, music. No, I love his music too, but I just don't have time to listen to this motherfucker's dropped 189 million songs this year. He got out of that Atlantic deal in one year. He working. He going crazy. Dwight's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> they just announced the Motown shit. I was just talking to Dwight hey, what, last week. Hey, some Dwight. other shit I'm fucking with. You, you heard of Icy Twat? Icy Twat? Yeah. That sounds wild. Yeah, so Rocky put me on his music a minute ago. That's a and, guy? Yeah, Icy? a dude named Icy Twat. He's from Chicago. That's amazing. Everything he dropped. He, be, he doing the beats, doing everything. The nigga hard as hell. I like Lucky. Lucky's dope. Yep, Lucky's on uh, Empire too. Shout out to Empire. Of course, uh, you already named uh, bro, but uh, Westside Gun. Good. I fuck with his shit a lot. Westside Gun. Shit Yeet. Do you like Yeet? Yeah, I like Yeet. Shout out to I you. I like his music. Yeah. Do you like the Minion song? Uh, I think so. It's really like everything. I just be playing this shit through like the last two, three albums. That's why I appreciate about you, man. Your fucking taste is so vast. Yeah, like like you're the first like person I ever dope. heard play little uzi in my life for real <laughs> we were in boston and i did a show like a 
we were in Lawrence, uh, Massachusetts with DJ Pup Dog, and somehow we ended up in a hotel room afterwards with, I think Dre was there and some strange people as well. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, you were playing Uzi on SoundCloud. <laughs> some strange people. Yo, another uh, Larry June. June, of course. I fuck oh, with his yeah. music hard. The Alchemist Project. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Alchemist. Man, I want to see, what's up with you and Alchemist, man? How the fuck both y'all from I, L.A.? Yo, Dre had his number. I texted him from Dre's phone. I said, hit me. He ain't text me. Whoa. I don't know. What's up, Alchemist? Yeah, Larry June's been on a tear. My, my brother, Channel Tress, you heard him? Mm -hmm. He makes like dance music, funk. Just a really talented dude. So sh shout out to Channel Trust. I'm about well. to listen. As soon as Thundercat, it, everything he's been dropping. Of course. Um, I got to check out Icy Twat. That's my favorite rap name ever. Yeah, check him out. That's you don't hard. fuck with it. I thought that was for sure. Like Icy Twat sounds like the illest. Like if I was like a porn chick. <laughs> <laughs> don't do him like that. When you hear the music, I'm telling you. Okay, I'm in, man. Yeah. I'm in. What up, y'all? We got to stop the interview real quick, tell you about our good friends at MyBookie. That's right, man. MyBookie is where you want to get this money and uh, enjoy uh, being a degenerate like myself. And it's the best time of the year to be a degenerate because NFL season is uh, obviously we are in the midst of a crazy NFL season. NBA season just started. World Series is going down. And you can get your bets in right now. Go to MyBookie and sign up for a new account using the promo code BOOTLEG. That's B-O-O-T-L-E-G. You sign up right now. They will match your first deposit. That's right. Put in a thousand. Oh, they'll give you another thousand to gamble with. That's free money. Free money to gamble with. Let's get in on this action, man. NFL season. I'm loving this part of the year. So much good. Just everything to bet on. Football, basketball, fucking UFC, uh, NFL, baseball, whatever. Now is the best time to get your gamble on. So go sign up for a new account at MyBookie. Use that promo code BOOTLEG and double your deposit. Let's get back to the interview. Uh, any? Have you been binge watching any TV, man, lately? Lately? Nah, not since the... Uh, What's the last shit? White Lotus. I, they got a new, what you call it, coming out uh, season, I think. I'm excited for that. Have you seen it? White Lotus. On HBO? Mm -mm. It's like some comedy shit. Like this family goes to some island and it's like the mom, dad, the daughter and the son. The son's hella young. He's still like fucking jacking off every day on his phone to porn. Nice. The daughter is like Damn, is that like fucking dudes but brought a girl that she's fucking right. with too and it's just a crazy fucking. So little jacking situation. off on your phone every day is a young like child thing to do, is what you're saying. So you're saying like, like when, I'm immature. Uh, well, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you still go. I thought once you had your wife. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> it was a low hanging fruit. I had to make. So the is joke. that cheating? No, I hope not. Fuck. If so, I'll be fucking. I'm fucking out of here. I'm a cheater like a mother. I'm fucking gone. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I think it's cheating if you buy OnlyFans content. That's. Right. That's like, if cheating. you're spending money on it, if you're yeah. spending money on it, to me that's you shouldn't be spending. Yeah, yeah that's kind of crazy. Just get it for free on Reddit. I wouldn't know personally. Reddit. I wouldn't know I, personally I, I, that you can get girls OnlyFans. I, I've stuff never for tried free. that style. So if you, you go on Reddit, Reddit, every girl's OnlyFans is just ripped on there for free. I don't know that from experience, but I have a friend mm. whose entire livelihood is, you know. Okay. Pirating women's content on the internet. <laughs> it's a thing, man. You watch uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Uh, no. With Larry David? It's on HBO. It's like the funniest Larry show. David, the, old, the old white man. The old, it's like the best Jewish rumor of all time. Yes, I've seen it a couple times. And I've also seen him at this golf course that I play at. You've seen him in person? Yes. Oh, my God. See, yep. that's I tell my wife there's two people I freak out about if I met him. He's it's and they both look the same. If I met him or or, or Bernie Sanders, I'd be really excited. Bernie, huh? I love Bernie, man. <laughs> They're both up. kind of like they could both kind of like pass as each other, you know. So but <laughs> don't let me meet Larry David. Wow. Because I'm fucking getting the picture. I don't give a fuck if he hates me. I don't care. I'm going through the security. I'm getting the fucking selfie. I didn't get the picture. Tom Brady was also there that same day, so I got the picture with Tom Brady. You passed up Larry David for Tom. I know. I know. Yeah, but Larry David might not be here much longer. <laughs> That's true. Tom Brady, he's going to be single soon, 
So you know he's going to be raging with you at like 11 in Miami soon enough. Don't let Tom... I would... I hate... I, like, listen, Tom's in the middle of a divorce. We don't like to see anybody get divorced. But if he ends up going through with this divorce, he's going to be, I think, Leonardo DiCaprio level of slang. Wow. Like, we're just going to see him tied into every hot up and coming sucio boys let's go for sure are you uh currently relationship non-relationship i'm a sucio so you're uh you're you know classic tie sucio boys I love we you. up <laughs> are you a sucio or olympio i'm married are you a sucio or olympio i am not a sucio <laughs> all right i mean i'm a sick fuck but i'm not a I'm a sick fuck with my wife, you know? Then you're a sucio. It's all right. You can still have a wife and be a sucio. See, I got to make sure we get those. We got to make sure that shit is clear. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, Shout out, out to wifey, man. Shout out to my wife. Yeah. Shout out to the family. That's most important. A hundred percent, man. Uh, anything else like a fan, like for you, like a, I feel like you're somebody who I hear a lot of people who are very much influenced by you. Do you feel like there's been anybody in the last like 10 or 15 years, like kind of since you've been active, that's also had influence on you as well and your sound? Or do you feel like, you know, you're kind of. Yeah, I've been influenced by uh, <clears throat> shit from a long time ago. Say we talk about Ella Fitzgerald, like jazz era to. I'm talking about the new shit. Prince to the new shit for sure. Like there's been some certain people that hit different in, you know, my music, musical... Who are those people, though? Uh, there's many. Like, I uh, I like... Uh, what's his name? The homie from Seattle. Macklemore? Uh, nah, his name is uh, Highway. Oh, I haven't Hi heard of him. Highway is crazy. Okay. Uh, what is it? 2009, Highway 2009, check him out. I like so fake, so fago. So fago. His melodies and shit. Uh, I like, of course, blast. Blast is fire. Uh, Brent. Brent is amazing. Uh, there's so many. Were you kind of hip to blast because he's like not a new artist in LA? He's been doing nah, this thing look, for a long so time. So blast, uh, I've known him since King and Blast when he used to be in a group. He's also my homegirl, Lady G, Jizzles, relative. Mm -hmm. And he's been around us since the beginning, since like a little kid. And uh, to see him do it, it's just been like, yes, that's exactly what was supposed to happen. And it's only, I'm sure, because he kept on going. Yeah, he's been at this for a long you time. You know, and uh, that's and he's, what it takes. And he's mastered like every aspect of the industry. Like he can engineer himself. He can do his own artwork. He kills he it. He can direct his own videos. Like. Kind of like, like if you really wanted to like just lock in and handle your whole process, you could do that. It's a lot of work. It know? is a lot of I work, but you're it. capable of doing it. I'm capable. I'm capable of paying for it as well. So you know, it's all good. Might as well pay. <laughs> it's all good. I got a lot on my plate. I got a lot that I'm doing. Yeah. What else besides uh, the album? Do you, are you working on? <clears throat> some TV shit here and there, some acting shit here and there. I'm getting into all type of shit. You're going to see a whole bunch of shit just start to drop over uh, next year. Uh, just know I've been working hard. I don't really like to talk about a lot of stuff until it's happening. But uh, Acting, though. Yeah. I like that. And uh, just more music. I got my record label, Easy Money Records. I got my artist, Leon Thomas, a few other artists, and... Uh, we about to go crazy. You just about Easy to see Money it. Records. Easy Money Records. So Easy that's Money new records. because you had your other. I had the movement, the which movement. I still have the movement, but I did a venture with Motown Records, with Easy Money Records, and uh, like I said, Leon Thomas, the first single uh, we had. Uh, we're on the second single right now, Love Jones. So uh, if you haven't heard it, make sure you go check it out. And uh, what do you Leon's look for? one of the greatest. I was going to say, what do you look for in an artist like to sign? Uh, it, it it depends. But with Leon, it was like, wow. Like he played me his shit and, and uh, he's making all the beats. He's singing better than any of these singers I've heard. Um, better than me, shit. He, he goes crazy and it's just effortless. Like he's, he just bleeds that shit. So shout out to Leon, man. Yo, I want to ask you something because I, I feel like your voice is so special. Thank you. And I feel like it's so unique. And for people who don't know, like, you really sing that way. It's not like, like, yeah, obviously, you have auto-tune on some records. 
when you're live, you know, to hit those notes or whatever to make it sound like the the out the records, but you don't need that shit. Yeah. Right? Like, do you ever feel like um in terms of like your voice and you as a singer, do you feel like because you use auto tune and a, a, everyone's using auto tune, right? Yeah. But do you feel like s somehow like your voice is still kind of like not necessarily respected as much because i think your voice is crazy like i've heard you sing live in the studio and it just sounds like fucking insane yeah like everybody that appreciates the singing part knows there's records without the auto tune and like when i do use auto tune that's just a sound i was gonna say it's how just do you a frequency do just like if i feature another artist on my song it's the same thing as me turning on the auto tune it's a frequency it's a sound that i want it's the same thing as me choosing to use an acoustic guitar over it's an tool. electric guitar it's an instrument it's an instrument it's a tool and like it happens to be the sound that's in you know mm. so that's what i use on those type of records or if i switch up and make a you know an acoustic song, I might, I may not use auto tune, or I may use it depending on whatever I'm trying to do. So, I'm one of the real ones when it comes to the music shit for sure. A hundred percent. How many instruments can you play? Every one of them, if I really wanted to play it. The only thing that I haven't like really dove into was uh, woodwinds and brass, which is like horns, saxophones. Flutes, okay. trumpets, okay, all that. Okay, okay, okay. Woodwind is like a flute? Woodwinds is like the ones with wood, so like a sax. Got you, you know? got you, got you, got you. But, I mean, you can obviously shred on the guitar and... Yeah, guitar, any type of string instrument, I can figure it out. Anything with keys and any type of percussion instrument. You know what's crazy is recently, I just found out that Tame Paul is one guy. Yeah. Uh, I had no fucking idea. I knew, I knew, I knew. and then Because uh, I wasn't like ever a really big fan until earlier this year. I went to Joshua Tree and I ate a shit ton of mushrooms. <laughs> and um, I just found some playlist on Spotify that was like mushroom music. Yeah. And this fucking Tame Impala song came on. And that yeah. shit like changed my life. Hey guys, we got to stop the interview to tell you about our good folks over at BlueChew.com. That's right. Listen, you got to go to Blue Chew right now. Sign up for uh, Blue Chew with the promo code BOOTLEG. You're going to get your first month for free. Blue Chew, the same active ingredient as Viagra and as Cialis, but in a chewable form. That's right. You pop the Blue Chew, chew that thing, wash it down with your beverage of choice, and then get to work with that hard fucking cock of yours. Your dick is going to be harder than trigonometry was in high school, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be fucking raw. Like, you know, uh, Ryu and Street Fighter, he'd be like, Aryuken, and he does the motherfucking, this is going to be your dick. It's going to be like Ryu's fucking uppercut. You know what I'm saying? God bless whoever's on the receiving end of that, consensually, of course. Uh, they're going to thank you for taking the Blue Chew. So go to BlueChew.com, use the promo code BOOTLEG, all right? I'm talking free month. Right to your doorstep, indiscreet packaging, no awkward doctor's visits, all right? It's all online. You don't have to worry about going and sitting in a waiting room and be like, hey, doc, I have my dick. I could use a little a pep in my step, and then it's awkward. You got to look at this old fuck talking about your dick. He might ask you to pull it out. Who fucking knows what's going on? At Blue Chew, none of that's happening. BlueChew.com. And they also got the new, brand new, uh, mint-flavored chewable, which has vardenafil in it, which is the same active ingredient as Levitra and Staxin, which is a little more potent. A little more potent if you need the extra on top of the extra. You know what I mean? Get the mint chewable. Yeah, your wife will thank you. Your girlfriend will thank you. Your boyfriend will thank you. Whatever the fuck you're fucking will thank you. As long as it's legal, all right? Let's get back to the interview. Go to BlueChew.com. Promo code bootleg. That's it. That was how it was when I found out about the Unknown Mortal Orchestra. You ever heard about them? Nah. So this is... I thought it was this other band from Australia or New Zealand. I heard this shit one time on the other homie Anthony Valadez show. And I end up calling them to the studio. And I get to the studio and it's one guy. <laughs> and he's doing all this shit. And it's kind of like a similar vibe. So, yeah, you, I can you, appreciate real musicians. You know what I'm saying? They could really just put on a whatever. A whole show. What one man band. Yeah. Play everything. Everything. Put on a program and go for that shit. Yeah. So did you discover that band while on Mushrooms as well or no? Not on Mushrooms. <clears throat> I've done Mushrooms a couple times, but I haven't really like... In life? You've only done them a couple times? Yeah, probably like six or seven times in life. Oh. 
But uh, I don't know why. I just I just kind of figured you're fucking you're one of them ones. No, nah, I don't. I don't love it. That shit. Because I got a lot of work to do. You so have a song like, called Ego Death, so I figured, you know. Yeah, but still, like, I can't uh, just tap into mushrooms all the time. Like, I feel like it's been a wave of it where, like, all the girls and all, everybody, I'm doing mushrooms and shit. I couldn't, I'd rather just smoke a J. That's fair. Have you ever done, uh, like, any other, like, DMT or anything? I haven't done DMT. I've yeah. done LSD. Was, that was, like, was, shrooms wow. without the little stomach feeling. Right, it's kind of similar. You know the stomach feeling I'm talking about? Oh, I know. Yeah, so it's the same exact thing, but without that. Dude, I was just in Queens like time. three days ago <laughs> off of a whole fucking bag of shrooms. DJ Camillo's DJing. My fucking brain is just, bro, I was in fucking, was so much Bad Bunny, Bunny getting played and it sounds so much better. I was like, Bad Bunny's the greatest artist of all time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. I want to see his show, man. I'm hearing his tour has been like the best tour this year for sure. I saw him at uh, SoFi and it was dope. I, 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 it was just dope. No, it was great. It was okay. three hours long, so it was like, I, I'm familiar with like maybe twenty percent of his catalog. But how was the crowd? The it was whole... amazing. My favorite show I saw this year though was the weekend at SoFi. I Man, I him... wish I would have got to catch that too. Yeah, I seen his last tour. I think it was like at the Staples Center a long ass time ago. Right, and that was like one of the best tours I have ever seen. Yeah, I think what was impressive about the weekend was like. Um, how much he sounded just like the CD live, and he had like no, like he didn't have a lot of shit going on on stage, and it and he still captivated a. So you talking about the old songs? Yeah, I just mean you like said the CD. No, no, no. So like, think about you know what I mean. <laughs> you f- fucking dick. <laughs> but like, like the following night, because I saw him the first night and the second night, he stopped the show and was like, "Hey guys, I, I mean, you saw like he was like, I can't perform anymore." And I'm like, that's that's dope because he's so cognitively like aware of like how his shit sounds that like if it doesn't sound up to par, yeah, that's dope. Have you done that before where you're like, my voice is just not com- compatible with the show that's scheduled tonight? It hasn't happened in the middle of the show. It's happened before a show, and I just had to cancel it. So I know the feeling for sure, and that's the right thing to do because at the end of the day, this is it's a money maker. It's your money maker, it's your tool, you know, it's important. So you gotta preserve that shit. What's been the you you and uh even though I'm smoking LSD. Yeah, I was about to say, okay, right. fuck <laughs> guys over here chain smoking. Um no, I was gonna say, uh, you've had some pretty uh you've been on some pretty wild tours. You've had some pretty crazy moments, you've performed in some pretty crazy places. What has been like uh the wildest night on tour with Ty Dolla Sign? I'm sure Dre Sinatra's rolling up backwoods. Mm. Wildest night. Maybe it's some backstage shit. Maybe it's what happened after the show. Maybe it's what happened at the show. Ah, man. I can't call it. I'm, there's so many wild nights. I'm trying to think of the wildest that I haven't talked about before. Um, let me think of it, and then let's go to the next question, and I'll, I'll interrupt with the wildest night. The wildest Stay night. tuned for the wildest night. Stay tuned. <laughs> Dre Sinatra had Air Force Ones on. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle of America. In the middle of the tour bus in the hallway <laughs> with all of the lights off, pouring champagne on her. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, yo, um, who, are, who for you, like, um, you know, you talk about uh, obviously raising your daughter, man, and I think that there hasn't been enough artists that, like, really – own being a good dad like you have you wow. know Wiz is one of those guys we have friends who are who are like that but I think in general like there's um a lack of that in terms of just like what we see and I feel like um you're a great dad and you're also a rock star so how do you sure. balance being a rock star and being Ty who's also Susio boy and also being a great father uh <clears throat> I feel like uh being a great father is the most important if you ever get the chance to be a father or put in that position, um, that's just like common sense. People that don't do it, I don't understand them. Who raised you, nigga? Um, Other than that, uh, being a sucio boy and a rock star and an artist, that's my job and it's the greatest job in the world and I'm so happy to be able to make funny, make money and feed my family, you know, through through that, 
if you weren't making music, what would your job have been, man? I can't imagine it be because like, this is just what I really wanted to do. But uh, And I feel like whatever you want to do in life, if you really want to do it, as long as you keep on doing it, you can, you can turn way. it into whatever, you know, some money. Yeah, but I don't know if that's true. No? No. I mean, there's some there's some rappers out there that are that have been trying for a long time. I'm not saying anybody of rev, uh, of notoriety. I mean, like people I know nah, from like I know. Phoenix, Arizona. You know, okay. like no, nah, yeah. I know a lot of people that and they tried just, their it. music is terrible. Okay, well, being terrible is one thing. Well, somebody got to tell you that. You know, what I'm saying you got to kick it. See, there's different things you got to do. First of all, you can go in there and you can make a song and you can think it's tight and you can have like. The dick writers telling you it's tight, but then you gotta like ask around, ask more people. It's all about. They're all gonna lie to you. At the end of the day, this is like a people thing. It's just like, like Ty just lied to you. You, if you put your mind to it, not everybody can make money off of music. Uh, no, nah, that's a lie. I'm not saying everybody can make money off of music, but whatever you really want to do, and if it's not the music, you gotta figure that out and see that it's not working for you, and do it in a different way. There's other avenues in music than you being the artist. Yeah, that's now that's true. Yeah, let's say you're. Obviously a garbage rapper. Maybe you could be a well, no, you probably couldn't be an A and R because your beats would at least be <laughs> Maybe you could manage somebody. Maybe if, you could manage somebody. Maybe you, know, you could um work at a record store. Yeah. A store. <laughs> yeah, perfect. You can <laughs> maybe you could be the security. <laughs> maybe you could be a bodyguard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's actually cameraman, you know. It's art to all of that though. Camera yeah, ca yeah, I feel like stuff like that is very feasible because you yeah. can learn how to edit video i don't know if you could learn how to be like you could be the sound man you can learn how to hook up equipment mm. there's so many different ways so you could also i mean you probably can't learn to be a security guard you got to be like a certain like body type <laughs> but you're you know what your security guard uh well one of your guys uh, i forget i forget your boy's name the armenian guy who's, who's who, i don't know if he's still around with you but uh he uh he's also he's a badass motherfucker, but also not like a typical looking security guy. So I guess you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, for sure. Because some of these security dudes are are t they pack they're tiny, but they're fucking they know like they're like fucking green berets or some shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we gotta stop the interview real quick to tell you about our partners at Odd Socks, our presenting sponsor here at the Bootleg Hip Podcast. Listen, Christmas time is approaching faster than you think. I mean, we're like fucking a month and a half away or some shit, whatever. Uh, get some Odd Socks for your folks. Go to oddsocksofficial.com, use the promo code BOOTLEG, and you'll save 20% off at checkout. The most comfortable socks in the world. That's right. We got some Scarface socks. They got WWE. You know what I mean? They also got the Cheech and Chongs. They also got the Flamin' Hots for you hot shit eating fucks out there. My favorite, just the Odd Socks basics. They're just so comfy. Literally the most comfortable sock in the world. I'm holding the fucking sock right now. You can save 20% off. Plus, they got boxers now, baby. All right. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. Promo code bootleg at checkout. Save 20% off. And support our family at Odd Socks and the podcast at the same fucking time. Let's get back to the interview. You playing any video games? Right. As of now... Off and on, um, like Call of Duty or Call of Duty, PUBG, PUBG, uh, huh? Yeah, I still love PUBG. Nice, uh, NBA 2K, Madden. D first of all, the new Madden is god awful, but it's awful, that's terrible. Okay, I didn't even tap in. Uh, who's your team on 2K? The, I mean, the Lakers, of course, the Lakers. Do you feel like conflicted that Russell Westbrook is a great guy and he's from LA? But he's also the reason why the Lakers are a fucking dumpster fire right now. You're gonna just say he's the sole reason why they're dumpster yeah. fire. It's I would say like he's sixty to seventy percent of the reason why. I feel like if they just told him to go home and just not play, they would just get. It's like addition by subtraction. Did you see the other night when he pulled up with like thirty seconds left, and he, and and everybody was like, no, no. <laughs> Come on, bro. Who's the reason? Give me... Okay, let's... Why do the Lakers suck? <laughs> you think it's AD over Westbrook? This guy's from New York. Don't listen to this fucking guy's a Knicks fan. Maybe he should be the leader, though. That, fucking... that, that does make sense. Who? AD. LeBron's the leader. 
He's in decline. He averaged 30 points a game last year. What are you talking about? Let's not listen to him. He's like fucking rooting for Julius Randle and fucking <laughs> Jalen Brunson over there. Yo. Jesus Christ. Nah. Uh, shout out to Russ, I, though. Shout out to Russ, man. I think people just got to realize what, you know, their talent and when it works and when it doesn't and stops, you know, guessing. <laughs> I think you got to have self-awareness to like openly accept other roles. Yes. So like if you're self-aware enough to be like, but I don't think he's hit that yet. Yeah. Like Melo kind of had to hit that. And then he came back and was like productive for the Blazers. And I don't know if he's playing right now. But yeah, shout out to Russ. Yeah. Legendary guy. Um, LA has been in a, a really like interesting place since the pandemic in terms of just like, it's always been, I mean, everywhere's dangerous, right? But perceptually, a lot of... Sh- stuff has happened in LA that has kind of given LA a bad rep in terms of just like, you know, obviously rest in peace to P&B Rock, people have gotten killed here, people have gotten murdered here, robbed, all that. Are you, with the current climate of the city, do you move away, move around a little bit differently, man? And the one, why do you think it is currently like that? Uh, I think it's just more publicly uh, on display right now. It's always been some shit. I'm from LA, so it's always been some shit of course. like happening. Um. Move different. No, we always moved, I feel like, the right way. I've been in certain shit where maybe I was too comfortable before and had to get awoken, you know what I'm saying? But uh, everybody moves safe, you know, and that's anywhere. Especially since the pandemic, though, yeah, I feel like people are more a little bit more hungry and shit, uh, like right coming out of it. Like when you started seeing hella people just get robbed just in broad daylight. And yeah, I think like a you few had laws that made it okay. Made it okay, and yeah. you had masks that made it like easier. And yeah, like you could rock around with the push on, and no one, right. you know. Right. So everybody, uh, you know, be careful and stay dangerous. Did you have a uh, relationship with PNB? Yes. Uh, shout out to PNB man and his family. He was a very cool dude from all the times we. Um, encountered each other. Yeah, and uh, it's super sad and super like, damn, like really, right? And you know what's crazy is not like, him. Like he was such a nice guy, and then when you hear like the circumstances of what happened, that it was like a family, like a father and a son thing. You're like, shit, dude. Like it's just crazy, man. It's a sad situation for sure, man. It is, you know, like you said, yeah. stay safe out here. Um. Album by the end of the year? Uh, we got the biggest single in the fucking world right now, my friends. Anything album related, he's just deflects uh, to the single. Okay, you got the single out. The album comes out January then. You know, the album's coming soon. Let's focus on the biggest song right now. My friends featuring Lil Dirk. Shout out to my brother Mustard. We out here. And then uh, any more collab projects coming? Obviously, you have some classics. You got the Division album. You got the Jeremiah Project. You got fucking you and Wiz. I mean, yeah, uh, I love doing music and I love making music with other people that love making music. And I've got some great shit on the way. With who? Sure. With who? Well, oh, how about this? I'm not gonna ask you with who because you're just gonna tell me about this, the single. Uh, if you, who would be somebody that you are a fan of that you would like to do a project with? If you if it, you could have it your way, I like what Drake like. You and Drake? <laughs> that would be hard. Yeah, you and Drake would be crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't know who else. Uh, me and Kehlani would make a crazy album together. Ooh. For sure. That'd be easy. You guys are both on Atlantic. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Kehlani. We got to talk to David Ali. Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. She's been killing it, too. Shout out to her, man. Well, I appreciate you pulling up. You didn't answer the question about your craziest night on tour. You didn't think uh, of it. My crazy fucking... Shit, I'll send it in on a video or something. I don't want to see the video. You shouldn't be sharing that video. I don't want to see that video. <laughs> like, yo, there was 11 women. Susio boys. Susio boys in the building. Ty Dolla Sign. Boom. Sir, let's get it. Fire.